Please suppose, if you will, that someone takes a battery, rated at 1.5 volts, and connects it to a small DC motor. For the sake of this video, we shall say that the motor consumes 15 watts, that is, 15 joules per second. Please further suppose that, for some odd reason, that person then attaches a small DC motor to the dynamo. Dynamos, of course, convert kinetic energy into electrical energy. And, of course, in this supposition, the dynamo connected to the small DC motor will produce a tiny bit of electricity, considerably less than the 15 joules consumed. This is due to friction and drag for the most part. The energy that the dynamo produces will never be greater than the energy that goes into the small DC motor. Let us say that the dynamo produces 7 joules per second, which is being very generous. Suppose we now attach a rotor to the small DC motor while it is still attached to the dynamo. Onto the ends of the rotor we shall attach high gauze magnets. We then place a series of diminishing magnetic fields around the rotor that will attract and repel the magnets on the rotor. How much energy will the dynamo now produce? The answer is, of course, much less than the 7 joules per second that the dynamo produced without the rotor and magnets. This is because adding the rotor adds drag and more friction due to the power to weight ratio problem. Weight increases by the cube, but power increases by the square. It is always a losing prospect. One may get, perhaps, two or three joules per second from the dynamo. No matter how clever one is in placing the rotor, or the magnets on the ends of the rotor, or the magnetic fields around the rotor, no additional energy is added to the system because magnetic fields do not contain energy. The only energy in the system is coming from the 1.5 volt battery. Variations on this magnetic motor theme are many, and they all, without exception, do not work and never will. The same idea has been thought up by many thousands of people because they falsely believe magnetic fields by themselves can perform work. They cannot. Energy must be added. It does not grieve me in the least to see adults squander their time and money to try to make such impossible devices produce more energy than what goes into them. Adults ought to know better, and it's their own damn bloody fault for being too stupid to ignore the laws of physics and even reality itself. I must confess that now and then it does give me a slight bit of sorrow to see young people squander his or her time and money to perform the same impossible feats.